one of the, you have a, per, a particular perspective because you work in university food service. So I wanted to ask you about um, how, I mean, you have more budget constraints with your ingredients, I imagine, than as a chef in fine dining. How do you maximize the impact of the dollars that you do spend on extra virgin olive oil? How do you make it affordable? Well, that's a very good question. Uh, the, the the issue of the olive oil affordability uh, in in our environment it's really brought up quite often. Uh, we we ultimately make decisions uh, in terms of our value based sourcing. What are the things that are important to us, and to what degree we are willing to invest resources on those things that are important to us. So there are trade-offs, obviously. Uh, and we have done that with olive oil, similar that we have done with other categories and channels of our surfing. With, with respect to the olive oil, um, we, uh, at the foundation, uh, our organization, Yale Hospitality, menus and, and, and uh, offerings are based on Mediterranean diet and culture. Mediterranean food culture and Mediterranean recipes. Uh, early on, we realized, many years ago, we realized that uh, the, these countries, they offer best solutions in terms of delicious food that ultimately is good for people, it's memorable, and is good for planet. And, and by the way, they provide affordability in general because uh, they are mostly plant forward. Uh, meats are consumed in uh, very small portions. And it's, it's mainly about celebration of the grains, uh, legumes, and vegetables. And so if, if you set up your menus based on those principles, now soon you find uh, resources, soon you find money that alternatively you'll be using for your, plant, for your um, uh, animal-based protein. And, and you can divert those resources to, to the areas where you want to emphasize uh, in, 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 in your key uh, culturally based menus. And, and then another thing, so that's one, reducing overall animal based protein and in reinvesting those dollars in, 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 in areas of interest. And the second area is, we're not an organization that we use a lot of uh, deep fat frying options. We don't, we don't have them. We don't offer French fries on a daily basis. When we do is, uh, you know, it's not an everyday thing. It's, just, uh, it's maybe once every two weeks or three weeks we have uh, deep fried items. And when we do, it's actually falafel. We do falafels, for example, and you don't need a deep fat fryer for falafels. And as you know, air fat fryers also, it's becoming, they're becoming very, very popular. So we divert the money also for um, the oils that are required in the deep fat fryers to these alternative fats, alternative oils that are actually better for you. There's also a myth that olive oil is really not affordable. I, I argue against that. If you know the market and you know suppliers and various sources of olive oil, you can get into a space uh, in a fiscally responsible way. Would you talk about the styles of oil, that, uh, of olive oil that you have in your kitchens at Yale and why, how you use them, these different styles, and um, you know, why you chose to have a range of styles? question related to the styles of the olive oil and, and the usability in our kitchen is one that we've been uh, uh, addressing again for many, many years. As you know, olive oil uh, is used in preparation. You know, you can get vegetables, meats and, and whatnot, and you can uh, massage them and you can actually marinate them in olive oil in the prep. And then you cook them you know, uh, at the cooking, uh, uh, olive oil can be used. And then ultimately, on the finishing touch, when, when it actually comes in the service line, you can use a different kind of olive oil. In, in our organization, we use uh, 
uh, primarily two blends. We have Pecal and Arbequino 50-50 when we use them actually uh, in our residential operations. And the, these 50-50 uh, ratios are actually, we, we buy them in bladder. So that means they're always uh, vacuum packed. You know, air never actually gets uh, connected to the olive oil. Uh, it's in sealed bag inside of a box. So that's how we use them in the, in the residential operations. But we also have these large containers that we use them in our commissary. Uh, at a different ratio again. Uh, um, so I'm sorry, in the, in the dining halls, we use them actually uh, 60, 70% Arbequino, I believe, and 20, 30% Picol. So it's a softer version of it. And then in commissary, we actually use 50-50 split. And, and there are sometimes we also use uh, a combination of the Arbequino and canola oil, when we actually really, we want to take, make it super soft. Uh, again, we use a ratio between canola oil and, and Arbequino. As you probably know, in a lot of restaurants, chefs have only one oil, one olive oil. What would you say to them uh, to encourage them to explore more of the range of olive oil styles? Why should they have more than one oil in their kitchens? Okay, that's it. That's an excellent question, Janet. You know, I, I believe this uh, space of the olive oil is a forward trend in the space in terms of uh, not only consumer and customer's preferences, uh, uh, but also is an area that uh, it opens up the door for so many other things that we have not done before. And if you recall, uh, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, uh, there was only one wine that people ordered in some restaurant, and it was white Zinfandel, and some argued that that was not even wine. Uh, it was a sugary beverage. And But today, when you go to restaurants, and I actually, I'm, I'm very proud of this fact that you uh, consumers now know a different variety of the wine, and they enjoy them with different food, uh, and they actually have a lot of affinity toward quality wine. I argue that the same can be said for olive oil. And by the way, one more example could be um, chocolate. You know, there was a day that you, when you went to the supermarket, the chocolate was always a milk-based chocolate, uh, and 60%, 70% was sugar and then some margarine or some sort of trans fat and maybe some cocoa powder in it. And, and that's what was available at the time. Today, you go to the supermarkets across the country and you see that, you know, there are a variety of the chocolates. Same thing can be said for yogurt. Uh, who would have thought that yogurt is gonna have such an emergence? And now you can, you can literally walk 100 feet in a supermarket and see all sorts of variety of the yogurt. Consumers, consumers, they learn how to enjoy. And in order for a chef to not only be meeting the expectations of the consumers, you know, I argue that we need to be in front of it. We need to, we need to entice the customers. We need to give ourselves permission to create opportunities for our consumers and customers to explore and, and to enjoy the, the benefits of this variety of the olive oils. You referenced the wine world where people uh, really are accustomed to thinking about great matches, great matches of food and wine. Can you talk about some great matches between uh, a, a dish and the olive oil used for it? Are there are times when the, the style of olive oil really makes a dish shine? Uh, olive oil, uh, depending on how it's used and when it's used, uh, it's, it's, it's an amazing contributor to the flavor profile. This is just, you know, I would say a classic example of, you know, that when they say uh, the, uh, the whole is more than the sum of the parts. You know, so it enters in the space, not just as an addition, but actually a, a whole range of other things that are happening in a dish. Um, I think there's a natural affinity 
between olive oil and uh, and vegetables. I mean, they they love each other, and they go with each other so well. Uh, be it in a, in a raw format, okay, or be it in cooked format, and it's not. Uh, it's 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 for us. It's a word that we are exploring, and it's a new world for us. But for Mediterranean countries and for populations that, for generations, they have learned how to use the olive oil in 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 an effective way in their dishes. This is it's second nature to them. You know the comfort foods of like just simple hummus and 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 a good quality, high quality olive oil uh, in hummus, and it. it it's just amazing, uh, but we we in our organization um, years ago we had a simple dish uh, that was just purely on half an eggplant uh, roasted in oven with with drizzled olive oil and some fresh herbs together with some uh, really really high quality ripe tomato that we roasted it and we just pulled them out of the oven and put the eggplant on the dish, put the tomato next to it put a little scoop of hand dip ricotta, a nice, beautiful crostini, and then drizzle the whole thing with some pickle, you know, really pungent pickle actually there. Here's you got the creaminess of the eggplant. You got the milk richness of the ricotta. You have the acid and sweetness of the tomato. I'm just having, I'm drooling right now speaking about it. It, it was an amazing dish, and it was one of the most popular dish, yet so simple to prepare and to deliver to, to our customers. This was one of our key dishes for, for a long time, and, and, and we, bring it, we keep bringing this back over and over again in our organization. But there are a lot of dishes like this that, that, that I can talk to you about. Are, are your chefs having um, finding some excitement and stimulation maybe in in exploring that range, in deciding when it's the right time to use a mild oil, when it's the right time to use a more pungent oil? Is that kind of a journey for them? It is actually this, uh, using different olive oils with, uh, with different dishes. It, it, again, at, at the beginning, it's this journey of the exploration and discovery. And while you're doing it, you're training yourself because that has to happen too. Okay, uh, affinity toward olive oil, uh, particularly extra virgin olive oil with different varietals, is not that it's second nature to us. You know, we have not done this before in a way that it's customary in other countries. And I argue that even in countries like uh, Greece, Spain, Italy, uh, North Africa, and, and all these other countries, also they're learning about their specific a feature and flavor profile of different varietals. And they too are accentuating one aspect to another aspect of it. So we, we are in a journey of the exploration and the chef's ability to taste and, and measure uh, varietals against what ultimately they feel that the dish needs to deliver to the customer and then invite the customer in that exploration of the flavor, it, it, it's an exciting one. It's one that ultimately, Janet, is going to create that memorable experience that we call it the third dimension of the hospitality. You know, it's no longer about good food and good service. It's about that memorability of the experience that it stays with you. So I, I argue that you know, we are learning in this process using different variety with different food and experimenting with it. Together, we need to hold uh, our customer's hand and ask them to stay with us through this and get their feedback, whether it works for them, it doesn't work for them and, and explore it. And I think it, it will be an amazing journey. You mentioned that Yale, your menus at Yale are largely plant, plant forward. Uh, do you feel like olive oil has more of a role to play in that kind of cooking? Maybe, you know, helping to deliver more, more satisfaction, uh, more flavor in a plant uh, forward kitchen? Your, your question related to um, whether olive oil has uh, improved or eased uh, 
our ability to deliver a plant-centered or plant-forward menu to our customers is one that very difficult for me to answer because I, I tend not to be objective in this particular space because I love olive oil. Okay, and and to me, the fact that I'm 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 using the olive oil so much in in various dishes that I I enjoy, uh, it, uh, you know, it it makes it difficult. I think yes, it has. Okay, let's say it, uh, because like I said before, uh, there is there is this uh, there is this uh, symbiotic relationship between good quality olive oil and plant-based food and plant-forward food. They love each other. They go along very much uh, well with each other. I know that uh, sustainability is very important uh, to your program. Uh, would you, do you have a few words to say about uh, the use of olive oil and, and the sustainability implications? Uh, is, it a, is it a sustainable choice? Olive oil and sustainability is, is an area of uh, emerging interest uh, across the world, in emerging countries that uh, they they have interest in this product, uh, in North Africa, in other places, because as you know, uh, the olive tree is, is not so picky. Uh, it doesn't need an an unbelievable terroir. Uh, it, it is not does not require so much water. Uh, uh, it, it's it's a tree that can grow in really harsh environment. Uh, and so, and it doesn't require a massive amount of uh, work uh, in terms of the preservation of it and bringing it to, to fruition. And the life cycle is actually, even though olive trees are, uh, there are olive trees that they go back to thousands of years because they, they get to live uh, and have a very long life, uh, but it takes not many years to get an olive tree to a full production capability. So for that and for many other reasons, uh, it, it's a good good plant and good tree in, in the space of the sustainability. And ultimately it produces a fruit juice that is good for people and good for planet. This is, you know, again, people, they, they, they need to, to realize that when you're talking about olive oil, you're not extracting it through all sorts of uh, chemicals and all through to uh, uh, extractions that you have to do so many different steps. In reality, good olive oil is just a fruit juice, separated fruit juice, deemulsified fruit juice of, of olive fruit. And, and that makes it uh, not only sustainable, good for people, but, but, but good for for planet in terms of all the other attributes that I mentioned earlier. Great. I, I want to go back uh, for a little bit to that, uh, that range of styles that we know olive oil comes in. I know a lot of people really have uh, trouble appreciating the very pungent oils, the really peppery early harvest oils. Do you have any thoughts on how to make those, how chefs can make those oils more, more approachable to people? So I, uh, your, your question related to how we bring the customers with us in appreciating the more peppery taste. And, 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 and by the way, those are usually associated with higher level of polyphenols in, in the olive oil. And how do we bring them along with us so they can appreciate those things? Uh, I, I would say uh, that our consumers are probably, so there's not a homogeneous group of the customers. Uh, different customers, they have different needs. Uh, there's, a, there's a large population that health and wellness is important to them in terms of deciding what to eat. And I think we're, uh, telling the story about that, yes, it is a little bit uh, more pungent and more, more present in terms of the boldness of flavor profile, but that stuff is good for you. And I and I think that that's that's a door opener for them. Uh, that's that's not that's not going to be. Uh, you, you're not going to need to to sell them anymore on it. They, they're going to you use it and enjoy it. Then there's another group that the the appreciation for the taste of the bitter is something that has to be a learn 
uh, a learned behavior for them. And for them, yes, you need to tiptoe your 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 use of the olive oil and gradually get them there. 